This is not a concession that we are going to the norm when we forgive, when we reconcile. It is our Christian vocation, my dear brothers and sisters. There is no alternative for forgiveness. And the word of the Lord is very clear today. The first reading tells us we should not pray for health. We should not ask the Lord to heal us. If we do not forgive, some of the brothers and sisters are saying, Father, I have this sickness, pray for me. I want to be healed. I want to be free from pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, nervous tension, so on and so forth. They ask me to pray. In fact, I should ask them first, Father, our mommy, my dear brother, my dear child, do you have any hurt in your heart? Have you not forgiven anybody? Start with that. The Lord will work miracles. You cannot ask for the Lord for the healing of your sickness if you do not forgive anybody. It's very clear. And secondly, the book of Sirach also tells us in today's passage, think of your lost things and forgive. Don't expect to be buried before you forgive. Think of your lost days. You have to go to the Lord with a reconciled heart with all your brothers and sisters. Think of your lost days. And yet one more sentence. Remember the commandments. Remember the commandments. The Lord asks us to love one another, my dear brothers and sisters. Remember the commandment and forgive. How oh, even the Old Testament is pleading with us that we all should forgive, my dear brothers and sisters. And in today's gospel, Peter thought he is going to be appreciated by the Lord. So he asked the Lord, my brother is going on hurting me, sinning against me. Is it okay, Lord, if I forgive, forgive him seven times? Your seven is fullness, a full number. So he thought, so three times itself is very good, but I am telling my Lord that I am going to forgive seven times. Perhaps he expected a compliment from the Lord. And the Lord responded, saying, not seven times, but seventy times seven. My <coughs> brothers and sisters, we should not understand it as meaning that the Lord wanted us to forgive four hundred and ninety times, not at all. Infinitely, without any end, you should go on forgiving your brothers and sisters. That's what the Lord tells us, infinitely. Now we are called, as we have come to this place of grace, for prayer. Have I not forgiven any of my brothers and sisters? Am I in good terms with my parents, the elderly parents? Or with my cousins? With my friends in the class? You can't come to the presence of the Lord until and unless you forgive. Only then your prayer will be heard. Elsewhere, we read in the gospel. If you come for prayer, forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Only then your prayer will be heard. And the Lord tells us a beautiful parable which cannot be opposed at all. The meaning is very simple. There was a king who wanted to settle the accounts with his servants. He calls one of them and then 
ask them to pay what is due to them. And then that man says, have mercy on me, I will pay you. During those days, if somebody didn't pay, especially to a powerful person, they had the right to demand that they can be imprisoned and even the wife and children can be sold. The master, when he pleaded, had mercy on him, a huge amount, and forgave him. But then this person goes to one of his fellow servants and demands what he had borrowed from him. That man also uses the same words. Have mercy on me. Have pity on me. Please forgive me. I will pay. I will pay you. He doesn't say, I will not pay. This man, forgetting all that his master did, sees to it that he is in prison. And the friends of the servant report the matter to the master. And the master is very angry. I have forgiven you so much. Should you not reciprocate the same gentleness, compassion to your fellow servant? What a contrast, the immensity of my kindness to you. Say for example, six lakhs of rupees. What he demanded from this fellow servant is one rupee. The Lord wants us to realize, my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord forgives us six lakhs of rupees, six hundred thousand. Can't you forgive one rupee? This is the immense difference between what the Master, the Lord forgives us, and we forgiving one another. If the Lord were to take action, on each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. For all our sins and failures, we will not be alive in this place now. The Lord has been merciful two days ago, St. Paul was telling The Lord was patient to me. The Lord was compassionate to me. Still the Lord called me. I thank you, Lord, for calling me, that I may be a lesson to the other sinners. You showed patience, compassion to me. I persecuted the church, you called me. The Lord has been very patient, my dear brothers and sisters. Sometimes you may say, Father, you can go on speaking. If I forgive, no. That person will take advantage. I experience pain and hurt. I don't want to go through it again. Come on. No. My dear brothers and sisters, how can you pray meaningfully, honestly, the prayer of our Father? When you start our Father, the Lord will say, You have not forgiven your brother. Say, My Father. Don't say, Our Father. When you don't forgive, the Lord will say, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. You have to change that prayer, honestly. Those of us who have not forgiven, do not forgive our sins as we do not forgive those who sin against us. That would be more honest. That would be more honest. We can't cheat the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. To pray the prayer of our Father, you have to forgive. You have to forgive. So many excellent models of forgiveness who wanted to follow the Lord. Follow the Lord very closely. Follow the Lord who said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. That is the ultimate lesson that Jesus our Lord has left for us. You are not going to live 150 years, 200 years. Think of your end and forgive and be happy. Vengeance is the Lord's, not yours. Don't take vengeance. To remain happy, cheerful, even if the other person doesn't deserve forgiveness, you have to forgive. Start today. A phone call is necessary. Maybe a letter of apology is necessary. A hug in some situations. A word of encouragement is necessary. 
Our sending a gift is necessary. Our wishing for their birthday necessary. Start the new my dear brothers and sisters. The Lord is pleading before you today. If you want to be true disciples of the Master, true, true children of Mother Mary, you have to forgive. You cannot harbor anger and hurt in your heart. I recall how on 13th of May, on the feast day of Our Lady of Fatima in 1981, our Pope John Paul II was shot. Three of the bullets pierced him by Ali Akram in 1981. The Lord saved him. Pope himself contributes his being saved to the intercession of Our Lady of Fatima on that day. After four hours of surgery, the Pope recovered. Pope went to the prison in Rebibia to meet this person and was speaking with him for 21 minutes with Aliyata. He was touched in 2005 when the Pope was in Jamali Hospital. Aliyata went to meet the Pope again. Reciprocal did the visit and in 2014 he brought two dozens of roses, flowers, 24 flowers and based at the tomb of the Pope. The example of our Pope, my dear brothers and sisters. This is discipleship. This is following Christ. This year, on our fourth, Sister Rani Maria, a Clarist sister, will be beatified. She died in Madhya Pradesh, bearing 54 stabs in her body by Samantha Singh because she was working for the liberation of the poor from the money lenders especially. She wanted to come to Gopal and go for holidays to her home in Pulwari in uh, near Cochin in Kerala. On the way, she was dragged out of the bus and she was stabbed and then she died. You know what happened? Her own sister, another Clarice sister, her own younger sister. 95 she was killed, but in 2002, her own younger sister went to the prison. On August the 22nd, on the feast of the Queenship of Mary, and then tied the donkey to this murderer of her own sister and accepted him as her own brother. Yesterday I was once again going through this incident. Tears rolled down from my eyes. Not only that, again in 2007, this Samantha Singh went to Kerala to this little village and then got the blessing of the family. They said they are seven children, two sons. You are our third son. The murderer is accepted as the third son of the family. This is Christianity. This is Christian witness. What are people done to you? I want you all to be united family members. Even if they have taken away all of your property, even if they have humiliated you, my dear brothers and sisters, forgive, forgive. And the Lord will do marvels in your life. Ultimately, joy, peace. That is more important than all our ego. Reconcile with all those with whom you have broken your relationship. The Lord will bless you. It is not merely a ritual before receiving communion, this side and that side. Those who have fought with us are not sitting by the side, 
Are you trying to cheat the law? You should not show sign of peace unless you forgive the person with whom your relationship has been affected. Let us be honest, sincere. May the Lord give each and every one of you the grace of forgiving wholeheartedly from the heart and maybe approach the Lord who has been very gracious to us. The Lord is patient, compassionate. May we radiate the same patience and compassion to our family members, friends, neighbors. Amen. Let us proclaim our faith. I believe.